Welcome to another segment of Mate Night. Today we're diving into a fascinating what-if scenario for the film 500 Days of Summer. As I mentioned originally and with the other films we will discuss later, I struggled to come up with a specific change that I disliked about the film because its message is so impactful and well executed. Instead, I've opted for a thought-provoking what-if that leads to a significantly different outcome for our protagonist, Tom... I sound... Oh. Hansen. Well ha- done. I did not expect you to get that. Well <laughs> what done. What is it? Hansel? It, Hansen. Hansen. That's good. That's Hansel, good. Hansel, 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 Hansel. Hansel. So, without further ado, presenting A Lifetime of Summer. <laughs> I'm a poor guy. <laughs> what if Tom missed the wedding? <laughs> So, a bit of backstory. In the original film, Tom's journey takes a crucial turn when he unexpectedly runs into Summer at an old co-worker's wedding. So, the scene we were just discussing. This encounter rekindles old feelings and gives Tom a glimmer of hope. At that point, he was starting to mend a bit. He wasn't at his complete low point, Mm -hmm. but he was, you know... Still hurting. He was hurting, but he was on the mend. So... However, the subsequent revelation, so he, he meets her, has a glimmer of hope, and then she invites him to this party. And the subsequent revelation that Summer is engaged at the disastrous party that follows acts as a sharp catalyst for Tom's personal growth. So he goes through his real low point at that point, but he uses that painful experience to end up quitting his job and pursuing his dream of becoming an architect. But let's explore an alternate reality (laughs) where Tom never attends that wedding. Without this crucial moment of confrontation, his path and emotional recovery take a darker turn. (laughs) You're evil, man. (laughs) I can't wait for it. So so here's the change. Tom decides to not go to the wedding where he would have reconnected with Summer. Mm -hmm. This change means Tom doesn't experience the immediate jolt of seeing Summer again, nor does he have the subsequent emotional breakdown at the party. What are the ramifications on Tom's life? Firstly, emotional recovery. So there's a delayed and prolonged healing. Without the wedding incident to force him into action, Tom's recovery from the breakup is much slower. He remains stuck in a cycle of longing and self-pity, the place that we saw him at when he was at the wedding. He wasn't like at the low of, I, I'm, I'm so low, I'm at the bottom, that I need, the only way is up. He was just coasting, coasting on that midpoint of just being mopey. mopey, kind of marginally depressed without being out and out. Not enough to fix himself yet. Exactly. So he remains in a stuck of in stuck in a cycle of long and self pity. His healing process becomes more introspective and solitary. The absence of the wedding's confrontation means Tom doesn't have a clear moment of closure, like when she comes in later and tells him exactly what happened mm-hmm. and a catalyst for change. So with this lack of closure, Tom never confronts Summer again, missing out on the crucial. Conf- I'm just repeating myself here. The confrontation at the bench. There you go. So this lack of resolution leaves him in a state of emotional limbo, perpetually questioning the nature of their relationship and his own feelings. Now, stalled progress. So is Tom's career as a greeting card designer that continues to stagnate, doesn't have a push to pursue his dreams. He remains in a job he's uninspired by. He has the missed opportunities with a lack of motivation and direction, which results in missed opportunities professionally and personally. And he might continue to hold on to the idea of Summer as the one that got away. But here's the real kicker. How does this turn worse for him? Because from this point, we expect he's almost like um, a powder keg. He's a powder keg here. Yes, he's a bit, he's he's in a bad spot, but he's ready to explode in a positive way. There's just one thing that is needed for him to say, I'm going to become an architect. I'm going to quit this. But what if that happens to the negative? What if about a year later, after not having this event, after just m- ruminating on Summer for all this time, the one who wouldn't ever get married, the one who just said she wasn't interested, she didn't believe in true love, the one who completely affected his beliefs in romance, he finds out from a mutual friend that she got married. <laughs> he doesn't hear it from her. He just says, oh, by the way, do you remember Summer he used to go out with? Yeah, she got married. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. but, but That's she the did- reaction in the film anyway. But she yeah, wasn't like that. God. But he doesn't hear it from her. He doesn't he understand it. it. And he hears it at a point where he's still low. So this news hits Tom hard, Love as that. you can imagine, forcing him to confront the fact that Summer has moved on. This revelation further destabilizes his emotional state, making him question everything he thought he understood about their relationship. Self-reflection and, highlighted, 
doubt. <laughs> Tom begins to doubt his own judgment and self-worth. The knowledge of Summer's marriage acts as a final blow to his confidence and self-esteem, a blow that he really could have done without. He starts to view his past relationship through a lens of regret and self-blame, not seeing what his uh, friends and his sister tell him, only seeing all the things that were good about it. So how could it possibly have been? It must have been me. It was all my fault. It was all him. Solitary life. <laughs> You're so cold, man. I had actually another point before that. Emotional poison. All right. <laughs> yeah. Some Nigeria, then. The unresolved feelings and the final revelation of Summer's marriage become an emotional poison that taint Tom's view of future relationships. His bitterness and lack of closure inhibit his ability to form new, meaningful connections. And then solitary life, he ends up leading a sad and... Lo- <laughs> Sad and lonely, <laughs> lonely existence. Life. He remains trapped in his job as a greeting card designer, never taking the steps to change his life or pursue his dreams. The once hopeful romantic becomes a shell of his former self, isolated by his unresolved past and lost opportunities. Summer lives happily ever after. I like this ending. Dark, right? I like it. How? What is the catalyst required to turn him into a uh, murdering psychopath? Ooh, <laughs> like he's already he's bad now. Not far off it, is he? he? I feel like the I feel like the right you know the right detail, and that could be it. Oh man, is there anything you can think of? To well, I feel like it's gonna be a I feel like it's gonna be a work related thing. You know, I feel like he's it's the greeting cards world that's gonna that's gonna just. There's going to be a straw that breaks the back. I reckon he might turn. So he he goes from being a handsome guy who people are like, he probably shouldn't be here. He's in handsome, a job that... Handsome, handsome. Handsome, handsome, handsome. handsome, handsome. handsome, handsome. He, goes from Tom, he goes from Tom handsome <laughs> to Tom hamster. <laughs> and he... he uh, <laughs> Tom hamster. The sad, lonely little gerbil <laughs> running hamster. around in his little Tom wheel. Hamster. Stop, hamster. I think it would be stuff like that. It would be the office start to maybe make jokes about oh. him. Maybe he becomes the butt of every joke and he turns not only into the solitary loser who used to... Yeah. People wouldn't see him as, you know, the cool, quirky, I've got quiet it. a guy. new person at work. But instead of it being the love of his life, Summer, it's now the person who is that straw that breaks the camel's back. They're the one who directs that trouble in his way. Mm. And, then the, and then the moment, right is when he sees a greeting card written by this guy and it says something like Tom Hamster on it. <laughs> and that's the moment. And then he opens it up and he goes, what are you going to do, kill me? <laughs> I think we've cracked it, Freddie. I love it when we come with these ideas and we've reached such a mature conclusion. <laughs> Tom bloody hamster. Brilliant. Well, I'm, I'm, I I'm I really like that. Man. I think that's a I think that's a fun change. I think that that is a fun and a plausible change. You know, I can I feel like this guy has always been emotionally vulnerable. This absolutely could happen to this guy. <laughs> he could become Tom, Tom hamster, hamster. Tom. <laughs> the, the murdering lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, oh, oh, I loved it man well listen don't forget to like and subscribe thanks mm-hmm. so much for listening thank you very much um, should we have a go at my what if then if yeah for sure that was good fun that time uh, we got ages